Hello everybody, uh, what I have today is an induction hob which is causing a bit of uh, strife. Um, Silvercrest, it's Lidl's own brand, I think it was something like 30 or 40 euros, so it wasn't that expensive. Um, it works fine up until a point where uh, it switches on its internal cooling fan and then on the display here you get E6 which after a bit of a digging around online I've discovered means the, the fan isn't working, it's not switching on or it's it's just not working and then it shuts itself down uh, you have to wait for the whole unit to cool down before you can switch it on again now, I'm going to open it up and see if I can do anything about this um, induction hubs are kind of kind of interesting they are if ever there was a uh, living in the future kind of technology uh, that would be it um, kind of even though they've actually been around for a very long time um, I believe the first demonstration, or the first I, the first people to come up with the idea of induction hubs, actually I'll leave that in because that may be holding on the the panel, the, sorry the knob, the first people who um, came up with them, came up with them in the early 19th century, 1910 according to the old Wikipedia, and um, but it wasn't until the 1950s when GM of all companies, General Motors, through their Frigidaire subsidiary, because they owned a home appliance subsidiary, of course, exactly that's what a car company does, um, developed the first sort of practical demonstration induction hubs, uh, but then, oddly enough, they didn't go into production until the 70s, and um, they sort of become a, a viable commercial product. So, like, the idea behind them isn't new. The big advantage of them is because they, because they heat the pan directly, um, they're a lot safer. No, they're a lot safer and a lot more efficient. And the way they work is that they uh, have a big coil under the, the glass plate, and an alternating current is passed between, over uh, through that. And you put your pot on the stove, and so long as it's made of ferrous, ferrous metal, that's basically anything containing iron, so basically limited to steel and iron, stainless steel, steel, iron. Doesn't work with copper, doesn't work with aluminium, unfortunately. Um, uh, that'll induce a current, an alternating current, into the, the pot, but it's got nowhere to go due to eddy currents, which are basically currents that flow within a piece of metal and where the currents, there's no grinding, there's nowhere for the current to go. They'll flow backwards and forwards, eddy currents because they're like water eddy currents, so they, they swirl around. And the resistance of the of the metal will cause it to heat up. And it's very efficient because unlike using say a traditional electric stove, or it's like a hot plate or a gas stove, you, there's no losses associated with transferring the heat. And you're only heating it up as you need to, as much as you need to, because so there's less risk of fire and the likes. And why ain't this coming off? Here we go. Have I missed a screw? No, I haven't. So I might need to use Mr. Flathead to get in here. Let's see, and hope it isn't too dirty. what I expected. <laughs> Ooh, a cobweb in there. Could that be a part of it? Oh there you go, there's your coil. Um, the current is generated in. You may notice it's just housed in plastic here. The whole point of it is is that, uh, that this unit doesn't heat up. As, well it heats up in the sense that all electronic circuits do heat up a certain amount but nowhere near enough to heat, heat um, a pot. Um, like a television heats up. And it's, no, it's that kind of heating up, it's just no warm to the touch. Um, the only the pot heats up, not in an induction cooker, not the actual uh, um, cooker itself, which makes it very safe. That's convenient, I can just pull this out. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to do is remove the fan and test it. Now the fan itself doesn't only has two, two uh, Connectors. I was kind of expecting to see three or four um, connectors, which you would see in, you know, for speed. Uh, you'd have your positive and negative, but you also have a speed control. Uh, 
wire which would take a, P, a pulse width PWM signal and also a feed, another wire which would act as a feedback. So let's see if this is working. I'll put this out of the way, breaking the glass. There we go. Uh, let's have a quick look at it, see if there's any other signs of damage because even though the induction hob isn't designed to get warm, it could actually It'll get warm from heat conducted back through the pot of the pan it's heating up. Looks okay. The only way of testing it is to get the oh, that's the bench power supply, but I need to work out the voltage. 18 volts. That's quite po that's got quite a kick to it. So what I'm gonna do is instead of using tape, I'm just going to put that around like that and um, press the, the nails against it. I'm just going to switch on the power supply. Uh, supply. And I set to 18 volts and variable current. Yeah, dead. Completely dead. Not a peep. So, I can safely say that this is the fan that is at fault. Uh, which is good because a fan should be replaceable. Uh, it is bouncing around here a bit. I don't know if that's by design. I don't think it is. So let's see if I can get this off. I think it's... Can it pull off? Well, I have to use Mr. Screwdriver. Tease it off. Or is there some sort of wedge? Actually, hold on a second. There might be something under here. Breast Electrical Appliances Company Limited. I'll let you and your 12 year old mind think that one through. Could it be a broken connection possibly? Now how do I get this off? It looks... You see the whole fan assembly seems to be lifting up which is odd. Oh and there looks to be... is that something loose in there? Huh. There's something loose. That looks like a, is that a washer or some kind of a ring or a seal covered in oil. That's interesting. Uh, so I'm assuming the way the, the feedback mechanism works is that the circuitry in the in the hob itself is looking at current being drawn by the fan and if there's no current being drawn by the fan then it assumes the fan isn't switched on or well, it's not working I'd, I'd see I would like to not break this off but there doesn't appear to be any easy way to pull this off but anyway so yes um, and the problem with that is in my world is that you should the PC fans for example which are very similar in construction to this maybe made with less uh, heat resistant materials because this will uh, so what happens uh, would have the extra two wires coming in and out so one would be the speed controller and also the other one would be the um, sensor but what would happen in those circumstances is that uh, there would be a sensor on the actual um, fan itself and as the fan spins the sensor would pick up the motion of the magnet and feed back to the computer so there's no chance of making a mistake because it could be possible that this could short out and that would act you know, if you were measuring current drain you could effectively be you know, generating heat in a coil or part of the circuit and that would imply there is a current drain when there isn't. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to take a little break here to figure out how to dismantle this fan. I'll be right back when I've done it. And I'm back. Uh, I, the fan is not really designed to be taken apart. Um, it would appear that this ring here is uh, some kind of locking ring, locking all this together. Uh, and there's actually another split ring in here, so I think what happens is when the whole thing's put together, 
um, it's designed to stay together forever basically and not be repaired uh, so I actually broke it taking it apart but as you can see I broke off a fan blade but that being said I actually discovered what the problem was uh, the positive connection had come loose from the board so what I did I soldered it back together again and if I switch it on and this is ill advised because it's going to make the whole thing wobble I can make it fall off again whoa there we go we have the fan back and it feels a bit imbalanced because I've taken off the fan blade and it draws 18 volts a quarter of an amp which is no pretty low actually it's pretty decent so anyway I also cut the cord just to make it easier to uh, attach things up and test I'm gonna have to sort of um, solder that back together again hopefully I'll have enough room to do so but um yeah so what I have to do now is put this all back together again hopefully I can epoxy this back to the way it was fingers crossed I don't know how I'm going to get this back on because I don't want to put it back in without the, blade, the fan blade because it may imbalance it and cause it to damage it, It'll cause more damage as time goes by. But we'll see anyway. I'll be back when I've done it all. And we're back. Uh, so yes, I've epoxied this back together again as best I can. It's a bit of a hack job, but it does the job. Um, I didn't want to leave this blade out because it would make the whole thing unbalanced and because there's a, an odd number of blades um, I couldn't take one off the other side because if it was even numbered I could just break one off the other side and everything's balanced and I'm sure to get enough wind flow. I'm just going to join this cable back together again. I've just soldered it back and um, using a bit of heat shrink using this little blowtorch which has a hot air uh, element to it. Getting it to start up though with the hot air bit is a bit of a challenge, but there we go. And if you can see the redness there, there is hot air coming out, you need to be very careful. There's no flames, but it is hot. So it's gonna go over the heat shrink and shrink it down. It's a case of just going over it gently. You don't want to stay too long in one spot because it will burn. Oh. I've got a flame coming out. Maybe I should turn this down a bit. There we go. There we go, job done. Be careful of that because it's going to be really hot. So what I need to do now is test to see if it's working and I'm complete, my brain mustn't be working today because I completely forgot that I didn't actually need to use the nail approach. I could have just stuck these uh, jumpers in here to test it out. It's quite cold today so yeah, I'm a little bit shaky so red is neutral I know that doesn't make any sense but sorry blue yeah red is neutral and blue is live for the purposes of this it does the job hold it down in one place just to test it before I put it back together again and turn the power on and something's not working so after spending uh, far too many minutes trying to figure out what was wrong turns out the plugs had just dropped out of the power supply silly old me so if I switch it on there we go I think that looks pretty good it's pretty well balanced it's not shaking it's not vibrating it is moving across the table slightly but I wouldn't worry too much about that um, so yeah, let's all put it all back together again. Get all this stuff out of the way and tidy up my messy bench. Oh yes, I should have put that in there just so it's in. Oh, it's broken. Oh dearie me, but never mind. I can, uh, I'm actually going to, well, oh, yes, I should put something in there for that. So what I'm going to do is, if I had some uh, small cable ties I would use those but I don't have any. Do I have some? Oh yes I do. So what I'll do is I'll just put one of those through there. And tie it off and then trim it. Because I don't want any strain to go on this wire here so I'll just let a bit through so it's 
does a slight bump and then tighten it. And then trim it off using the side cutters. Hopefully that will fit into the hob, which is down here. So let's put it all back together again. And keep our lap, as they say, in the north. So I will put that in the correct way. I really you shouldn't do this on a messy bench because you'll get stuff caught and damaged. But what do I know? So, I must actually do a little video on uh, screwdrivers types but also the kinds of metal and how you know you're buying a good quality screwdriver because uh, if you do any sort of any amount of uh, DIY work or taking things apart it's a good investment it is a good set of screwdrivers and here we are back just to see if this all works uh, let's see if it uh, I'll switch it on without something on it see if it makes any difference and we have the fan. Low EO means there's nothing on it, so let's put this on. Well, it is a bit steamy, but I think we can call that a win. So that's how you fix the fan in a wonky halogen hub. Assuming it's this brand. Okay, cheers, bye bye.